Institute is a nonprofit organization. We're 10 years old, and we were founded to bring together environmental and economic development concerns. And we thought that there was a real need for uh, more places that brought together the interdisciplinary approach and and looked at the problems that couldn't be solved from one perspective um, from a variety of perspectives in order to move them forward. And so we created Delta really as a laboratory and we worked together on creating a public policy dialogue in Chicago around um, brownfield redevelopment. At that point in time, very few brownfield sites were getting cleaned up and, and redeveloped. And the dialogue was very, very successful. It wound up changing the state laws in Illinois um, for redeveloping brownfield sites. And today, many, many sites are getting cleaned up and redeveloped because of this process. So the regional dialogue came up with a set of 10 strategies that could be used to um, reduce ozone emissions. And so these strategies then were turned into a campaign called Clean Air Counts. And the goal was to reduce ozone emissions by five tons a day. And um, today they're at 6.4 tons um, emission reductions per day, which is pretty amazing. Among the relationships that we built through Clean Air Counts, we built a lot of relationships with building management companies. and. Um, the Merchandise Mart was one of those. And so when Elise joined Delta, we were just at the point of bringing the Merchandise Mart into the Clean Air Counts program and, and beginning to work with them. They started with Clean Air Counts, and it was a perfect process for them because they got comfortable with doing the um, analysis and starting to look at some of these programs, and then were able to graduate and to be the biggest lead to revive building in the world. One of the areas that we really saw some opportunity was building waste. Forty percent of the solid waste stream in this country is made up of construction and demolition debris. And, um, you know, there's a joke out in, in Portland, Oregon, um, uh, I was just there, and you know, there's a truck that, that goes by that says, you know, um, just because they're called landfills doesn't mean we need to fill them. So we started to look at what those opportunities were, and we realized that there was this huge market gap in Chicago. So we started to kind of look at how to open a reuse center here. Over the last year, the momentum around um, the excitement of opening the center and providing this resource to, to Chicago residents has been huge. But one of the things that we identified as being a, a barrier to getting these materials into the reuse center was that a typical um, demolition process doesn't leave much on the site. You know, a bulldozer will come in, uh, one or two days and just completely um, level um, a house. We were starting to kind of look at um, the idea of deconstruction, how it could be um, used as opposed to demolition in Chicago, and it just so happened, it was serendipitous, um, there was an organization called the Reuse People that really wanted to start um, doing deconstruction in Chicago. What they're doing essentially is they're going in and taking a house apart brick by brick, two by four by two by four. One of the things that we're also really excited about with deconstruction is that it's a great opportunity for green collar jobs. A deconstruction project will take a crew of five or six people for three weeks. Because these materials are actually valuable, you can donate those materials to an organization like ours, so that donation value will then offset you know, all the added labor costs that we're dealing with. Um, so it's a really win-win win situation for everybody. Delta's role at the um, Green Exchange is kind of twofold. We're going to be um, partnering with um, the developer to manage the shared office incubator component of the facility and then also to provide, we'll be providing the education and technical assistance services to the tenants but also to green and greening businesses beyond the Green Exchange. So we're thinking that between our network and the network of the um, the Green Exchange will have just a huge array of relationships that we can bring to the kind of problem solving um, that we think will need to occur.